What's good, people? You know, I wanted to come on real quick and talk about a couple transactions that have just occurred. Uh, the Washington Redskins have, in fact, released linebacker Zach Brown and defensive lineman Stacy Magee. Now, these are moves that were expected pretty much since the season ended last year when everybody started talking about who should stay, who should go. Now, with Brown, a lot of people over the years have talked about his ability to be able to just put extreme amount of tackles together during seasons. And he seems to be a really good player inside the hash marks as far as stopping the run. You know, I haven't really honed in on him as far as being a good guy in coverage or not in the two years he's been with D in D.C. But I will say that I've heard a lot from people about him you know, being so inconsistent. And I know that the reason why he didn't get paid like he wanted to in Tennessee and then again in Buffalo was because he's not a strong, you know, three down player. Now, as the NFL continues to, you know, evolve and you see more of these, you know, defensive backs playing hybrid roles, you know, uh, some of them playing safety and linebacker, guys like Zach Brown, you know, they're, they're starting to fade out. Now, I don't think that Brown will have an issue finding a job elsewhere. Don't get me wrong. But I believe that he will not see the kind of contract he had with us again. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Well, they released him. And in the process, they took a $3 million cap hit, I believe. Or, excuse me, a dead hit. And in the process, they saved $5.75 million. Now, on the other hand, with, with Stacy releasing him frees up 2.275 million but it really points out how bad of a move this was to begin with stacy should have stacy mcgee should have never been brought to the, to the to the washington redskins it was a desperation move um you know i think that they brought him to the team because they weren't certain if they were going to be able to get their guy in the draft and they ended up getting jonathan allen and ionitis has stepped up and they haven't even needed Stacy at all. So it's been a complete waste of money. The team lost out on this one, a failure. I mean, you can't hit all the time. So this is just a bad move to begin with. But the two moves together uh, bring the Redskins a total of $8.025 million back on the cap. So this makes it easier for Washington to go out and give Adrian Peterson the deal that we all have been waiting to see. And this gives Washington the chance to be able to up their, you know, their game a little bit when it comes to the secondary free agent market, which they were able to strike in the, the primary free agent market with Landon Collins. They missed on C.J. Mosley. I believe Ha Ha Clinton Dix is in the mix somewhere. I've see, I saw earlier today where uh, Quentin Dunbar tweeted at him telling him, come on, let's go. The team has about $16.4 in cap now. And that's, that's definitely wiggle room to be able to move around with. It's a lot better than where we were, which was around nine. And that is after uh, you figure in what the, what the draft entails. And I expect them to possibly try to move Mason Foster to like probably cut him eventually. I think they're holding out on that to figure out what's going to happen with Reuben Foster and to figure out what's going to happen with the draft. But that's all I got. I'm actually really glad to see these moves happen. It puts Washington back in the mix now, maybe be able to, to make a couple more moves. Who knows? But, uh, officially, free agency begins at 4 o'clock this afternoon, so you'll see the Redskins officially start announcing some of these moves. All right, that's all I got. Hail to the Redskins. Peace.